Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. We lift your name up and we praise you for all that. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending him down to die on the cross for all of our sins, Lord, even though none of us deserve it. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every person in this meeting tonight, Lord, that we can all speak our minds and say what we think, Lord, and, and uh, do what's best for the children in, in, uh, in our parish. Lord, we ask you to be with us as we leave here tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That the state sent, we were offset, so we have to offset. Just explain it before we vote on it. I'm going to vote yes anyway, but I want to make sure everybody got the clarification, understand that they sent us a stipend. Yeah. Yes. David, would David be the better person yeah, to explain well, I, it? I can see him here. Yeah. No, we, okay. we, they, we talked about it, David. What again? Explain uh, the scenario that we're dealing with with the state sending X amount of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we're coming in and having offset. Yeah. Uh, state send us. 507000 I believe. How much? 507000 $205. And we have $620,000 worth of salaries and benefits for all the fund, for all the employees, except for Head Start, pre k people, which we already know about. And that will be funded by a state by federal grant. That's the reason the state for the deposit for the all. And uh, so anyway, um, we got. Five hundred seven thousand to six hundred twenty thousand. So we have uh, one hundred twenty thousand dollars shortfall. Why is that? That's just how they did it. They base it off of what? I assume they based it off of, and I'm greatly assuming here. Uh, because you've asked that question, did they yeah. ever answer you? No. Is all of our other grants typically are not exempted the way these were? They, they, these were specific, the money was specifically exempted. Let me back up. Any, any employees that are paid by a grant are typically covered by the grant for anything like this. In this scenario, they, many the legislature, specifically said you cannot cover anything out of the grant except for the Head Start and Act, which is fine as long as the state would cover it. So what the state is basically asking us to do is not to pay, pay grant employees this out of, stipend. Out of grants. We can, we're required to pay them. Okay, but we can't pay them out of grants. But we can't pay them out of grants. But we're required to pay them. But we're required right. to pay them. And we're required to pay the 2000 1000 yeah. no less. Which means they're underfunded, the amount of money. Right. Right. So I mean, it's just a simple scenario that, again, So are we able right. to turn those grant-funded educators in at that number that we turn in for the state to give us this amount of money. No, they don't want that much. So they won't allow us to count those not for grant funded yeah. teachers. Right. But, but they make way, us pay for it. If they really wanted to do it the right way is we would have paid everybody according to their guidelines and then submitted a reimbursement request. That would have been a dollar for dollar reimbursement. Instead they just kind of threw something, threw a number against the wall and poked the best. Right. Uh, and if there's a better, I mean, if there's a better explanation, I've not heard that. Uh, I talked to Richland, but they're they're also having fun, the same you know, same kind of thing that we're doing. So I mean, we're not the only ones. Yeah. Well, she haven't told me the same thing. Yeah. I mean, 
Okay. That's just unfortunate. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. So. And we can decide when we receive this money. October 20th, and, and the other's in April. Yeah. I have time to decide. Mm -hmm. Each Somebody already made a motion? Did you hear? No, I'll make the motion. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, I'll David, anybody's got a question, they're free to come and ask you. Not on board, Danny, but you know, <laughs> so we're good for another one. All right. Item C is recognized Rachel Cooper, Cooper as the October employee of the month. Good evening, everyone. This is Scott. Scott Walker, thank you for uh, coming up, Mr. Uh, thank you guys for partnering with us and allowing us to recognize an employee who has certainly gone above and beyond uh, for this month. Uh, Ms. Rochelle Cooper of Columbia Elementary, she was nominated by her principal, Ms. Melissa Gilpatrick. She was chosen out of a number of different, uh, different folks, and so we're proud that, that she could be here tonight. Uh, Rochelle is the definition of what a lifelong learner looks like. She absolutely loves learning new things about math and science and is always bringing me ideas for her to teach the students something new, and the kids love it. She comes to work with a positive attitude every day and is always willing to help with anything. She loves working with children and it's evident in the way she speaks to them, the fun ideas she brings to the classroom, and the way she encourages her coworkers to do the same. She is such a joy to have on our team, and she helps us find ways to focus on the bright side of all situations. Please help me congratulate Ms. Rochelle Cooper on the October Employee of the Month. Someone who can teach skills and knows about the point systems and all that kind of stuff. So, as a result of that, I have been talking with Tori Kretzer and Joel McGregor from the Monroe Athletic Club. I believe that's where a lot of our kids take lessons from. And so, they helped us work out um, a, a schedule kind of. It's kind of flexible. We've got to work around our schedule. But they're, and they do this with a lot of other schools. As a matter of fact, they currently teach, um, have tennis practices for St. Fred's, uh, several junior highs, Sterlington High School, River Oaks High School, and they were in conversations with us and Washtenaw Parish at the time. So what they said is that they will teach um, Caldwell in the spring as well, and will help make the team lineups and make sure the spring matches are all worked out because um, they, teach a lot of the kids in the area tennis lessons so they know those skill levels. They said the only thing that they won't do is go to the matches, and so that's where we have Coach Greg Jones, who has a CDL and will be able to take them to the practices and to the matches, and he will be responsible for um, recording the scores and putting the matches in for them too. So typically what they do is set up a group meet, so when they work with them on Mondays, they will be able to um, set up with the kids and what everybody's working on individually and they will practice that for the rest of the week and they would even make the lineups for the matches to be um, taken care of. Um, they recommended that we start around January 22nd and look at um, every Monday, of course, you'll have to work around matches. Said a lot of times, and I do have a copy of the schedule that they've um, put out, but Tori had even recommended that sometimes you have your practice on Monday and you're basically warming up for whatever match you're going to. So, like when we play West Washtenaw, that'd be perfect because they'll already be in Monroe and can then go on to the match from there. If we have home matches, we'll just work around that and then come back home. And so it looks like 
everything except for maybe the Gina match would be, that that Gina might be easy for them to do. We would just work around that schedule. Um, the cost will be um, $18 a kid, and so what they're looking at is a semester total, and we can adjust this number, but it would be about $200 per kid, which is very similar to what like our cheer and dance do in the summer when they have a, a camp that comes to them. This is basically just you get camp all year long throughout the entire season. So um, we've talked with uh, Coach Jones, and they've talked about fundraising to try to make sure that we do everything we can to take away the cost from the team. I believe he met with the team today, and they kind of, um, y'all kind of laid out some things about what to expect. So um, I feel pretty good about what we have set up. I'm very excited about working with um, the tennis people at the MAC. So will the students have to go to Monroe? On Mondays. On Monday. Yeah, and so what they're looking at is it'd be like an hour long, and he said they'll provide as many instructors as is needed to ability group the kids. So if you've got those who are performing here and those who are just beginners, mm -hmm. there'll be ability group. He said probably the instructors would be at a one to six ratio. So I thought that was awesome. And so we just, he'll take them there and they'll be there for an hour and then. So we'll out. provide mm -hmm. transportation to the prompt. Yes. Okay. And what time do they leave to go? Well, they're trying to work out kind of a schedule because he does basketball, and so whenever basketball gets over with, so we were kind of thinking they may leave at 11 o'clock, get there for a 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and then be back by 2. They may have to adjust that, and I would think that on the days that you're going to, like, West Washita, you may want to make that a little bit. They said as long as we stayed before 3 o'clock, because that's when everybody else gets out of school, then it's, they're pretty easy to, to work with us. All those practices will be off the school? On Mondays. On Mondays. On Mondays. Mm -hmm. you know, no. Jag, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. They're they're be on Mondays. Do this, you know. Yeah. And if yeah. basketball coach would add it, yeah. y'all are We are. We are. We are. Uh -huh. And so how many weeks would that? So the, the quote for the 198 would be for 11 total practices. So that would be 11 weeks. Um, we could bump that back if we needed to. Uh, he was going to get, Coach Jones was going to get the schedule to Mr. McGregor so they could work out which Mondays because you don't want to be on a holiday. And then, of course, if you have a rain out, you would add that to the end of the sessions. So we just kind of have to look at what, what we need and how much we would need. So it works out to $100, maybe $200 per right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For those 11 practices. Right. How many kids we got, Will? He said that he had um, about 82 show up for the initial, and then once they started talking about who's serious, I think they had probably 25. Were you there? Uh, I don't have class. Okay. Yeah. All right. Were you there? They had. It was more than 25. Well, okay. Yeah. We probably had about at least 45. Okay. There. Okay. So about 45. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Nikki, mm -hmm. uh, what happens on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? everything I've ever coached, I've never coached anything one day a week. Right, absolutely. So what they said is that they will set, Mr. McGregor said, they'll set up a group meet with the team, and they will tell everybody what they're working on for the rest of the week. So, so who's going to be with Coach them? Jones. He will be with them after basketball. No, That's after basketball season. How's right. he going to do that so, and coach basketball? Yeah, we've got to work all that out. We've got, we just came up with this Today. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Yeah. So... Yeah, so we will have to work that out. Um, maybe that somebody else has to supervise while he's at basketball. But I know that they're very, they want so to make this. So we're calling work. Greg Jones a faculty sponsor and not a coach. Well, I mean, he is a coach, but he But is, is he being paid to coach tennis? Absolutely. This is his second score. Yes. This is his second score. So this makes him a 10-month employee. He already is a 10-month employee. How's he a 10-month employee? We pulled him off of track. <laughs> Oh, so he was coaching track before he off the track. So we find a track coach. We already had. We just. We already had. We had enough. We enough that we can make it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did a card. Can I ask questions now, or do I have to wait? Hang on. Okay. Because I have questions directly to what you're asking. Okay. Anybody else got anything to add? Well, I, I requested that this be put on the agenda because I knew that we had been dealing with this since March, April, May, and we promised you guys that we were going to have somebody. Uh, I don't know anything about tennis, uh, but what I do know is that kids deserve the very best. And uh, I'm hoping and assuming, based on uh, them being able to look, them being able to go out and try to facilitate and bring somebody here, that at this point right now, this may be the best option. I don't know. However, 
uh, <coughs> if it's not, we still have chance. We still have a chance and uh, the opportunity to look forward because maybe somebody that's more credible uh, will be able to come and uh, you know coach these kids. Again, I don't know anything about tennis, but I know about kids. I know you guys deserve uh, somebody. So hopefully this can work out. I guess my only reservation is the logistics, and hopefully we'll get that uh, worked out so we'll know a little bit more. But I didn't want it to be assumed or presumed that we had forgotten about this. Uh, there's a lot that go on, and sometimes things just get put off, put off, put off. Not intentionally, it's just because there's a lot going on. So uh, I'm, I'm here now. I think we're here now. We're going to have to deal with it because the board don't have any say-so in the hiring. Any say-so. So uh, I'm assuming Superintendent reached out. I know John Geis, uh, we had talked about it to try to find somebody. That That's actually how this came yeah. up. He put me in contact with Vicki Kretzer, mm -hmm. whose daughter-in-law is Tori. And Vicki has been talking with them, and we've been talking, trying to have reached out to ULM to mm -hmm. see if they had any grad students, and I, I met with a brick wall there. So when Mr. McGregor, actually when Tori and I talked, she recommended this, and then Mr. McGregor called or emailed me the day, next day, and then I talked with him on the phone, and he said, this is the way everybody's moving. And this guarantees that our kids get excellent instruction. Excellent instruction. Let me comment on that because we mentioned River Oaks, and this is what I think goes on with River Oaks. Uh, first, let me say that I think the Monday thing, if we can get it worked out, is not a bad idea it's for the kids. I wish we could have got Miss Crutcher and Joel. I, I wish we could have got them to come here. I tried. Because yeah. uh, that puts a burden on folks on Monday. But um, <coughs> look, I don't have a problem with the Monday. I think the Monday is an awesome idea. I have a problem with the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because I believe kids ought to be coached every single day, and I don't like being told that we're working that. I mean, it's got to be done. We've got to find a coach that is going to be with these kids every single day. There's 40-something kids, somebody said over there, out there. Okay, that's as many or more than any program we got at our school. Okay, and in the past, I know it before I left there, it was up close to 50. So there's so many kids, and we've, we've, we've got a great court that our board and our taxpayers have paid for out there. So we've got facilities to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I appreciate Greg Jones, but I don't know how in the heck you're going to coach basketball the right way and then go t coach tennis the right way. No, no, it didn't work this way. I fashion. don't know how it's going to work. So I, I, I'm, I, I appreciate our effort here, and I, I'm sure Greg is a great guy. I've never met him. As an athletic director and a coach, I would never do this to an athletic program. I'm just going to tell you, straight up. That's all i got to say about it. Is there a possibility that someone else could help with basketball? During that, during that overlap time, I'll talk a little bit about that. would be great. Well, we got to keep in mind that he's a dad teacher. You can have no other job but dad. He's doing coaching and have to be after, after school. school hours. Mm -hmm. He can't be doing school hours. I mean, like, just carrying him some places to go school. Can't do it. But you're just saying the guy so can't do it. what you're saying is no. if he leaves school at 1 o'clock to go to a tennis match, he can't, he can't do it. Okay, then he's out. He can't do that because he. We signed a children's list. He's, your jack, the, he's your jack teacher, Ms. Wallen? Is that what you said? No, he's a jack. Yes, he's a jack teacher. A specialist. Jack specialist. And we get grant money in to hire a certified teacher that will only teach jack solely. So we can't do that? No. Not after, not no. so after we school. We do some, we do kind of work an exception mm -hmm. when they are doing after school coaching, you know. Can, can this be an exception? No, not doing school day. The school day is not Monday now. Oh, well, he can do Monday. Monday, Monday and out of school. But if there is a tournament or a match, a match is going to have to leave early to make it to the match. That's, That's what you're saying. That's you won't get to do it. But I do it in the school week, you can't. I'll be able to lose that what fun and get fines and everything else. When is the, uh, tennis? When? Is, is it in any day? They typically or? start the first week in February. But they start playing, practicing October, November, December. Mm -hmm. First matches are usually the first week in February. It's basically for are they, they're very close. close. 
He came in leave early so before Abby's the basketball game. That's why I told him. Have tournament. Princess Do they have tournaments every time. day of the week? It's going to be a conflict. We used to. Some Friday, Saturday. I see some Mondays, Fridays, Saturdays, Mondays. Thursdays. Some Thursdays, Thursdays on here, Fridays. So, and this is the schedule that Coach Gallio put together. Mm -hmm. So if we need to adjust it, we can. And they even told me at the MAC they would help us work out the schedule if we needed to. So um, if we need to make some adjustments for that, we can. And what you can do is get some on the other days, maybe get somebody else to fill in for him doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. We can, we can all you sit can. down and make this work. I'll be yeah. happy to fill in for him on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I would be more than happy to do that. More than happy. Do you drive a bus? No, ma'am, but I have a parent who will drive a bus. That will work out of that, but he just can't do it. Well, what, 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 what I don't want to do is just throw somebody in there. The kids deserve somebody that's familiar with uh, with tennis. And I, if we can get this worked out, I think that will suffice. But I, I don't want to just become comfortable with what we're doing now because those kids deserve. If we got four to some kids out there, they deserve the best. Okay, and we need to find somebody actively that can coach uh, tennis, but we hadn't been able to do that because of, of circumstances. To find someone situation. at this skill level. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Well, but, I, but, I, but but even though we can't find somebody, you can always find a deal if you look hard enough. What I'm saying is, this right here, if, if we can get this worked out, that'll be fine. But at the end of the day, as long as I'm here, I want the basketball, foot. I want them to get the best because football will always get the best. They've always got the best. I play basketball, avid basketball fan. I just think every sport deserves somebody that's affiliated with that sport. If we can't get it right now, we have to go with this. Because I'm applauding everybody's effort. Okay, I just wanted the people to understand that this was not something that had been put on the back burner. And it's not because we're trying to work or something like that. But if the guy can't do it, I'm, I'm certain you can come well, up with something. Well, you can work this out, but in January, they're going to come on to the Jack, I'm Jack Supervisor. I understand. They already sent me the letter early on. I sent to Nikki, and the Jack specialist and his principal, they know that they're going to be monitors in January. So you got a problem with this? I have happens. problem. No, not what, if you can work it out, I have a problem. Okay. I have a problem with him leaving the door. I can tell you, I've never day. had a Jag coach ever because of that law right there. What you said? I've never had a, a coach teach JAG because of that law right there. Because they can't leave at 2 o'clock. They can't leave at 1 o'clock. They can't, they well, can't go to baseball, softball, basketball. It's rough on them. Oh, same problem with basketball. You can't leave early basketball either. I get it. And the principal knows we talked about it. I told them let him know. We can do this only if. He realized that Abby can't be grabbing him early to go off on the game. Is he the assistant um, women's team or men's team? Clubs. Women's team. He said he's the assistant girls basketball coach or boys basketball. He, he teaches all, uh, he works for Abby, so I guess the girls basketball coach. We'll get together. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Well, before we put this into effect, just report back to us and let us know. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the cars. We've got a three-minute time limit. Uh, Carmen, you first. Okay. Um, Carmen Head. My son is a senior. I'm going to start over here because it's full better. My son is Eli Head. He's a senior. He's playing tennis every single year. Um, I play tennis. When I played play tennis, we had a basketball coach. He knew zero about tennis. I made it to state every year because my mother paid for private tennis lessons for me. I also played basketball. I ran track. Every sport deserves 100%. The GPA of the tennis team in the past has been the highest GPA in the school. We all know that. I am a Nazi. My child's on there. I want him to have the best grades. Um, last year was total chaos. Total chaos. Daniel Dalio was a great basketball coach. I have ultimate respect for him. He could not balance tennis and basketball. The, the tennis kids sucked hind tit because they couldn't practice because the boys were practicing basketball. Those kids sat on the bench during basketball practice and stared. So some of those kids are not playing this year because they didn't get to practice. Kids that show up on Monday, it's a great idea. But if they're going to have to raise money for their uniforms and raise money to travel back and forth, if they don't have a ride to get to the school to get up there, Every single Monday, let's say they get late, they get there late and the bus is already on. They're going to miss that practice time of going back. 
if they're a kid that doesn't know how to play tennis and they get to high school and they want to play, they're not going to learn playing from a professional one day a week. If you talk to Jesus one day a week, do you have a real relationship? No. You talk to him every day a week to have a real relationship. Same thing. Um, I know, I have faith. I was here at the meeting. I heard Baron say, we're going to work this out. I knew that y'all had a plan. I don't like this plan at all. I think that we can find people that are educated in tennis so that those kids have the best opportunity. Have we ever talked about this? We're not, we're not offering the best opportunity at this point. Um, Dottie sat here and volunteered and said she would help on the rest of those days. Dottie knows more about tennis than most people have ever forgotten. I am very opinionated and know a lot about tennis, but I don't have the time for it. But I guarantee you there are some people in our parish that we have not reached out to, maybe we just don't know, that may say, you know what, I played tennis at the mat for 15 years or 20 years. I could volunteer my time to help out on this off days. Um, just like you have moms that are willing with their CDL to ride on the bus, so on and so forth. The tennis program is sucking content. It has got to take priority. We have kids that could have gotten scholarships right now, but they're not. Because they last year, and I've seen the schedule, I didn't I didn't know if they were having a meeting today or I would have let and listen. The schedule that they have right now is about a quarter of the matches that, that we have always had in the past. I only have three minutes, right? Thank you. So, so Carl, let, me, let me make sure now. The money that's being raised, that's not for them to pay, pay to go back and forth, right? I mean, we're paying that expense. We'll pay the price. No. So the $18 every single week per student, the school board's going to play? No, the travel, the bus. But the, but the right. lesson is going to still cost money. Absolutely. We have to find so, the so, the so let me, I know I'm, I'm out of my three minutes, but I raised, my son raised, $1,500 alone last year selling poinsettias. I don't remember. I think he got to play in one or two tennis matches because it just didn't work out because of the way the tennis program was last year. Every year he's went to regionals and state. Did he get to go last year? No, he did not. Every kid's not like my Eli. But if every kid doesn't have $18 to pay every Monday, y'all can pay all you can for the bus, but if the kids can't afford it, you're not doing them any good. That's not giving the best. That's not every kid has eighteen dollars. Well, I'm glad you clarified that because I, I didn't know that they were paying eighteen dollars. And the plan is to fundraise, and and the fundraising can 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 take on more than that. And the, the plan is to fundraise to cover the cost of this, just like we do in every other store. Is I, a fundraise. I agree. I agree totally with what you're saying. I, I believe tennis has taken time to it for a long time. Not it, for a long time, for the last year. For a long time. For a long time. No, it, it has. It picked up. I it, promise it, you. But, but, anyway, but anyway, what I I would like to see a program. If we've got this, if we've got 45 children or students that are interested in this, we need to we need to really buckle down. Try to find seriously sit down and try to find somebody that can do this and take this on and do it right. Undoubtedly, the, the logistics of working out with JAG is going to be a serious problem. So that's not something that, I, I just don't see that working either. Um, I don't think that'll work out. So we sure can't afford to lose the JAG funding on this. Um, it's, if we didn't have a head football coach, we would be knocking down, we would be cutting down trees to find a head football coach. <laughs> so that's where we should be on this tennis program too. Same thing with every other pro. And y'all know full well if it was if it was basketball, tennis, or even track now, baseball, that we would be doing everything we possibly could to get find a coach. Now granted, tennis may be a little harder to find. I I can understand and that's why it. I Mr. can see Reader that. Said most schools are going to this method, right. this model. And, and I can see that. And I can see if, if programs are going that, especially if a school like River Oaks goes we're, to it. I mean, this, going is, this, is school, this is a school that got me, plenty of. Let me clear that up. We're not going to this model. But but irregardless, we got we going one day a week, and then we're practicing the other right. four. That's so the not no, 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 and that was never the intent to not yeah, practice yeah, either. Right. No. Can you yeah. practice? Do y'all practice after school? Yes. After school. After school. school. Okay. Well, that's good. You're right. But if the coach, he's talking about River Oaks, he's talking about, he's talking about his, if the coach does not have a 
very, very clear understanding of tennis. Of tennis. <laughs> they can play. They can lay out a plan. But it's just All like Baron day. said. He doesn't know anything about tennis. Day. I could give Baron a plan, but if he doesn't know how to teach a kid a swing or how to step right, you're spinning your wheels. Right. You're not do. You're not moving that child forward. That might be the only thing that brings the kid to school. They love tennis. They love basketball. They love football. That's what brings them to school to get you ed get the education to better the children. That's the point. Now he was not a pro tennis player, but he did play tennis in high school. He took tennis in college, and he played intramural tennis. So he's not completely okay. unaware of tennis. Did you say right. he played tennis in high school? That was all high school. Thirty-five years ago. Right? He said he played tennis while he was in high school. Oh, I did not say he was not a tennis okay. team. Okay. I don't I know did, that. Oh, he says he had played a few Falling times in high school. Team, he 30 said 30 he played years. in high school, he took the course in college, and he, he played intramural tennis. So, intramural? Intramural. Oh, no. Well, I, I think everybody's heart is in the right place. Mm -hmm. To do the right thing, to get the right people. Uh, I don't know how we get there, but if we, if we got something that, that tip, because I would much rather you guys have something. <coughs> Again, I don't play golf because I have the desire to. Tiger Woods can come in right now. I have no interest in it. And like Carmen said, if you don't know the basic fundamentals, you miss the boat. So I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt that uh, we're trying. Hopefully we'll find somebody. Uh, hopefully she'll be able to find somebody. Maybe after somebody's seen this on uh, YouTube or whatever, they'll be willing to come forward and assist. Because I don't think nobody wants any kid in any sport to be left out. And I, I can tell you, as long as I'm here, and as long as Randy, Bo, Melinda, and everybody else, because we, the heart is in the right place. It's finding uh, the right people. We, we're not just shortchanged here. We're shortchanged in other places. So, again, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt. I just don't know how to get it worked out tonight or tomorrow uh, to get to where we want to be at. But I'm saying, even though we're here now, let's not just assume that this is going to be long term. We're going to find those kids, somebody, Hopefully, sooner rather than later, that that'll come and, and give them the things that they need. That that will be my position. Because again, we don't have the, the authority to hire how our fire. We have a voice, and that's what we're doing now. And I, I don't want a uh, nigga to be crucified uh, because her and I have talked uh, somewhat, you know, about this. And uh, I'm hoping that we can move forward and get to where we need to be because you guys just deserve uh, the very best because I, I get tired of hearing other people talk about their schools and what's happening. I'm sitting there saying, you know, why can't we do this? And I think we can. It's just hard for us because nobody wants to come to college. And I think attitudes and a whole lot of other things allows that to happen. But at the end of the day, I think we're doing the best that we can right now. I, I don't know what else can happen. What was the reason they they just didn't want to make the drive down on Monday. Because they see so many kids, they don't have time to devote to drive and drive. Because initially he told me yes, they could come on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Then he called me back and he said, I'm sorry, I thought I was talking to Washington High School. I didn't realize Caldwell was 45 minutes away. And he said, they don't have the time to get all the way down here and back because they're back to back with lessons because they do all these schools. He loses $400. I mean, it's two hundred dollars an hour, basically. Mm -hmm. So if he drives down here and drives back, he's losing four hundred dollars because he doesn't have to take us at all. Right. And when, when he takes us, I mean, that's obviously two hundred dollars. But now he's got an hour drive and an hour back, so that's it's all business to them. I mean, they. And I feel like our kids lose that same time too. Yeah, yeah, we already have a minimal amount with our kids, and it's been two hours on the bus. For an hour practice. Really yeah. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that on those Mondays that we have matches that are already in the area. Go to Monroe for a lot of things. But you know, that's a but that's a great idea, Nikki. But if you don't wait till the day, like. The day you run, run the race is not the day that you should practice. That's the day you run the race is the day you sh the day you run the race is the day you're saying, okay, mentally this is what I'm going to go through. Mm -hmm. This is what I've already practiced for. This is all what I'll, I I don't I'm not going to go run a marathon and show up the day of the marathon and practice. Before. That's not the, the, that's why football has a walk through the day before the game. They don't want to stress the boys out the day before the game. I think going to Monroe is a great idea. I don't think that is the best. And I know that y'all are going to come up with a better idea.
but what about other schools that may be the closest schools to us? Do they have a tennis program that we could practice together? Even if it's a rival school, say Franklin Parish, or even LaSalle, it's not even in our district. I know that LaSalle and Gina High School has used Herb Bassett to lead their music, their bands, at two different high schools before. Is there something that we could do there? LaSalle doesn't have tennis, well, they do have tennis courts, I guess now they have the rec, but is there something we could practice? Dual roles? Put me outside the box on this. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. something. It's not yeah. something that. It's not yeah. something that's been put on. You know, on the phone. At some point, I said I'm going to have to think outside the box on this. Maybe we come up with something else. Even the, even if we're moving forward with this, because there may be some other option out there that I don't know. Because I'm I'm limited on tennis coaches. Mm -hmm. But it seems that as if you guys have a thought process that's outside of what this boardroom. Uh, is evolving too, and I think if you guys will, if you know of anybody, you know, be able to talk uh, to We've reached out to everybody who has given me a name of anybody who knows tennis. We have reached out and, and begged. So if you know of people, send me their names and I'll call them. <coughs> so tennis starts in January or February? It's the first it's the start the starting. Yeah. The, the, well, it's a spring sport thing. But um, there is something that's coming up in October, and that's what got us spurred along, is we know we have kids who would qualify for that, and we want to make sure that we have everything ready so for them to go. What, what are you guys, uh, what's the name? What, what are you guys doing now in tennis? Right now, nothing. We don't have a seventh hour. Nobody plays after school. They're in their fall sports. Like but you're still cheering cheer and stuff right now. Mm -hmm. so you really but the but kids who aren't in fall sports are doing nothing. Where in the past, they had seventh hour tennis. That's what we asked him about today the meeting, we were asked if we were going to get 7th hour, and he told us he'd work on it, but he doesn't even know how much we'll be able to play until March because of basketball. And our, one of our biggest tournaments is in, like, first week of February, or second week. No, uh, Bolton. Bolton, yeah. I, I think we can get to where we want to be at. I just think the emotions and reality has got to set in that we need to get somebody. Uh, if you guys could work with the superintendent, uh, Suggestions, ideas. I think we can get there. And if, if not, then we're going to have to hire somebody. I don't believe this is a program that that, that has necessarily been forgotten. I believe it's a program just like some of the other smaller programs, like tick like, like golf. Throw fishing in the mix now, but uh, but this is this is not where we have five fishermen. You know, we got 45 others. Uh, five or six golfers, maybe. I don't know how many golfers we have. How many golfers do we have? Anybody know that? Uh, probably five or six. But you have state 40, winning golfers. We got four or five here. Forty-five here, so forty or forty-five here. So it is something that we need to be, and, and we have been. I mean, that's the reason that court has been refurbished. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the reason it was refurbished, and, the, and one of the reasons because people kept coming up and saying, "Look, we, our court stinks. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something about this court. We've got to do, and we did do something about it." <clears throat> And so it's something that's being worked on. It's not something that's necessarily out in a, you know, like football, but to this, to this degree, if you're looking at that many students, it should be. Randy, do you, do you, it should be. Do you understand that this has been this many students for the last seven or eight years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It didn't just all of a sudden happen to be 45. It's mm -hmm. been well, that's the reason, this many students that's for the last the reason they got, seven or eight got years. That's part of the reason got the Jagon Courts done. People talked enough about it because of that very reason. But um, so, yeah, I think we need to put it on the top runner for sure. I well, I, I just don't want anybody to think that we're not doing. And I believe we're. What, I believe what, what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's going to be it's going to be something like you said. We're going to have to think about think outside the box on this for sure. Well, I'm I don't. Thing. I don't know any John McEnroe's can come down here and coach. <laughs> well, I, actually, that was outside the box. This whole thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. think we need a John McEnroe. I think well, we need somebody who will dedicate themselves to those tennis kids every single day. Because the way I believe is, I believe if you're a good coach, you're a good teacher. And if you're a good teacher, I can take you on the football field and you'll be a great football coach. Mm -hmm. I just believe that. So there's somebody at that school that cares enough about those kids that will, that will put their time and not put it into basketball, and not put it into football, not put it into track, but put it into tennis. There's somebody there. I don't know who it would be. There's somebody. Uh, I, I mean, I know, I know this is not a recommendation, but like I said a while ago, Dottie Schaaf knows more about tennis. Does it have to be someone that works for the school system? You have to have a school sponsor? 
Dottie Shaw knows more about tennis than, than I've ever even forgotten. I mean, she's forgotten more than most people even know. And she's there at the school. If, if you have to have someone that's literally from the school, there you go. you got Dottie Shaw sitting right there. Who could do it? Mm -hmm. The kids from the seventh hour t uh, PE that you're referring to are those children that do not play any. I, I'm a youth director at my church. Several of my kids, very timid girls, I won't name their names, are on the tennis team. That's the only sport that they play. Now that they don't have seventh hour PE, they don't. They're, they've got to come to after school practice. Where they're not going to get out there. And where Ann Kate's going to say, yeah, let me call somebody up and say, what's their practice? They're not going to do that. So for seventh hour, what are you guys doing? Well, I'm in two right now, mm -hmm. but other like There's the people who don't have anything, mm -hmm. they don't have a seventh hour PE. They just have classes. They have a regular PE. They, yeah, they, have they, have regular they just don't, where they were practicing tennis in the off season so that they could actually learn the sport and be able to win a seat on the team and get to play, that, that was their leg up. That was them learning. Do we have anybody else that has a card? Yes, we do. You want to continue? Yeah. We need right. to let everybody get a chance. All right, Ms. Dottie. Okay, thank you. Hey again, y'all. I know I was just here a few weeks ago. So um, I'm Dottie Shaw, and I just want to say I want to provide the board with some information that I'm suspecting you may not know. I imagine that most of you think our administration has tried really hard to find a coach to take over the tennis program at Caldwell Parish High School, and I thought you might like to know that I turned in a resume. I turned in a resume to the principal at Caldwell Parish High School in <coughs> August, and in that meeting I presented a plan to implement fall tennis, junior high tennis, and spring tennis. And I explained that I had been involved in every fundraising event that Caldwell Parish High School Tennis Program had done for the last 11 years. So I had an ins and out knowledge of how to make it work. I personally have this experience. I offered that outside of our former tennis coach, whose name we will not mention, there's not anybody at Caldwell Parish High School who knows more about tennis than I do. I know what it takes to run the program, and I know what it takes to make the program successful. I know the rules associated with LHSAA. I know what UTR stands for. I know what USTA, are, USTA is. I know Joel and Tori very well. I have the heart, and I have the knowledge. I'm vested in this program. I have two children whose success or failure of this program impacts them greatly. This child of mine gets dragged all over a tri-state area playing tennis. This child of mine takes lessons from Joel and Tori for $66 an hour, three times a week, so she can play college at the next level. I'm invested in this program. Don't just love her, love Jackson, love Lucas. Looking forward to Jillian, who doesn't do a single sport at our school, being on that team, okay? So, just a side note, in case you're wondering, why doesn't anybody want to do tennis at Cole Parish High School? Isn't there a faculty member who would do it? I, I'll do it. I want to do it. I'll do it. And I'll do a dang good job of it, okay? So, while I understand y'all can't control that, I do want you to know, I tried. I met with my principal. I produced a resume solid with, with people who backed me up with these two she's naming, Joel, Tori, Phil Trahan, one of the best tennis coaches in this area, all vouched for me. So, what I have to say as a parent is I'm sold out. My kids have been taking tennis lessons since they were four and five years old. My son has played in the state tournament all three years in high school and my daughter has played her freshman and her sophomore year. And we are invested in Spartan tennis. Here's what I have concerns of real quick. $18 an hour may not seem like a lot of money to y'all. Doesn't seem like a lot of money to me either. But I have knowledge that we have five or six kids who are juniors and seniors who work at Max Fresh Market and Brookshire's every Monday mm -hmm. to make their hours. So now they can't work, okay? So this is not an attack against the man who's been named. It's not his fault. He's just like Coach Dalio was last year, thrown into it. And while he may have played intramural tennis in college, he may have taken a class in that when he was in college, he don't know how to run a tiebreaker. He don't know these kids. And I'm using terrible grammar for a reason. So, last thing, I know I'm running out of time. The only skilled instruction our kids are going to get is with Tori and Joel. And Ms. McCann mentioned the schedule. We only go to Monroe three Mondays. So all together with this schedule that we have for the 2024 season with 14 matches on it, we'll only get eight hours of instruction with Joel and Tori. That's it, eight hours. You couldn't coach a football team with eight hours in one week. How are we going to run a whole tennis program with eight hours in January, February, March, April? That's what I want to know. 
So, again, Dottie Shaw for Tennis Coach. I'll take your votes if you want to do that. Thank and you. I would appreciate somebody, somebody helping our kids. Anybody. Dottie, just, just one issue. You said y'all. And I'm bad always, about using y'all. I always take issue with y'all. Let me tell you the reason why. Because if Act 1 didn't prevent me from making a motion right now, in a second, I would do it. I have no authority to do that. I can't tell the superintendent what to do, how to do it without uh, fear of some type of ethics violation. The, the more I listen and the more I hear, the more confused I get. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I don't know if we're going to solve this here tonight. But what I can say is this, is uh, even if I have to talk to our attorney, we're going we're to have a coach. Somehow, some way, we're going to have a coach here. I don't know when. I can't tell you what day. I can't tell you what hour. But we're going to have somebody that suffices enough for those kids to move forward. Again, I think right now, there's nothing that we can do. We can't do anything other than what's done. And uh, I'm a little upset, a uh, little disappointed. I didn't mean to offend you by no, 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 using no, no, the word no. I, I, just, I just like to take myself out of circumstances yes, and speak for myself. If I could do this, yes, I would, but I, I can't. Yes, okay, sir. so I, I don't know what, what, we're gonna, what we're gonna move toward, but it's gonna be beyond where we're at now. Yes, sir. I, I have one question just to clarify on the, the if they went on Mondays, $18, and they're there for one hour, and there's 40 students, how are they going to teach those four? Well, if you have 10 at this level, if you have 10 first seat players, and you have 10 that are 15th seat players, where, how are they going to do that? Mr. McGregor they tell told you? me that he would provide as many instructors as needed and ability for the kids. Oh, so it's and not just the, it's just not field and no, 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 I can answer that for you, Carmen. They, they, they have people that work for them. Okay. That, they're not as experienced as those two individuals, okay. but they, it would be like me and five other coaches having assisted coaches up okay. under us, and that's how they do that. They, okay. you, you may not get one-on-one -on -one with, with Tory, but mm -hmm. you'll get one-on-one -on -one with one of Tory's projects. Okay. And their goal is one to six projects. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Jackson? Yeah. I know that the basketball coach, I don't think that's going to work. I, I started tennis last year. It was my first every year picking up a, a tennis racket. I know I learned everything I know now about tennis from Anna Kay and all the tennis players that's played for years. Like, I know that Coach oh, Delia was a good person. I think he really did try his hardest. But he wasn't able to teach someone that's never picked up a racket how to play tennis. I know just like Anna Kate, John Paul, Will, that's the only reason I even stayed in tennis is because they can help me. And someone coming into tennis not as social as I was, they're not going to go up to them and ask for help or ask how to do this and how to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last year we talked about, like, y'all know how chaotic and everything it was last year and how our school was at a severe disadvantage at regionals and state because our coaches didn't know how the ranking system worked. I was supposed to be ranked number one and I got number three seat somehow because they didn't know. They weren't, no one ever taught them. They didn't know anything about that. Um, so we appreciate y'all stepping, like, y'all finding us a coach and Mr. Jones stepping up and everything. But we're really scared that we're still going to be at that same disadvantage. Uh, we had the meeting today, and we're grateful that he stepped up, but we have 14 matches this year, and that's like a quarter of what we used to have. And so how are, which are, most of the matches we have are still against like the good teams, like West Monroe and FP. And so we're like, a lot of them were worried, okay, this is my first year playing tennis, am I even going to get to play a match, or am I going to pay $18? every week just to go to the, to the map for one hour um and that's really like like we wouldn't expect the football team to have one hour of practice every week they that would be unacceptable and absurd and like i know it's just the looks but we don't even have uniforms right now uniforms aren't even being considered and we have to order those what soon. do you mean that the uniforms are not being considered like we have he said he hasn't known any uniforms yet and that if we found any then we could email them to him that we liked and if well, he choose like whichever he got the most did we have to fundraise for those uniforms though always we we always we 
fun, of course I fundraise for every sport, and I know I've had my three minutes, but when you fundraise for everything, at some point, there's always going to be those kids, guys, their parents aren't like me and going to go out and try to get as much fundraising as possible. They're the ones that are going to say, well, I can't afford to play, I can't afford to buy my uniform, I'm not going to play. Yeah, so speaking about fundraisers, we don't have any fundraisers yet because our main thing was the poinsettias and National Honor Society took that up. And so now we don't have any fundraisers and each kid has about $250 worth of money and that's 45 kids, which is like roughly $9,000 that we have to come up with. Um, Who took the poinsettias to National Honor Society. The National Honor Society. And, let see, where was I? Okay, so we do have a two sponsor, but he still does not have prior knowledge like we want. He told us that he played tennis a few times in high school, so he knows how it works a little bit, quote unquote. Like he said that, and I wrote it down. Um, when we this is really like when we saw we all talked about this. I remember it was at the end of the year last year, and whenever the football coach had quit, and we saw. Y'all, not y'all, but the school search like continuously for a coach who is the best option, and then us not have a necessarily real qualified coach last year, and not even really this year. Um, I go to the MAC. I've gone to the MAC for the past four years. I go two times a week, and last year I'd even get to watch team practices with River Oaks, and River Oaks has 15 kids. That last year they had about 15 kids, and the mat has six six hard courts, which is what we play on for high school. We're not allowed to play on clay courts, and the rest of them are clay. So, and they have three pros. So that kind of sounds snooty, but it's going to be a little rough. And I love Caldwell tennis because it's it's tennis is usually a rich sport, but at Caldwell it's not like. We have any kid, it don't matter what family, what background you have, you're playing tennis, you want to play, all right, pick up a racket. But now each kid's going to have to come up with $250, and I literally heard the gasp whenever Coach Jones told us that, and it's going to knock out so many kids just because of the price, and that really hurt. So. Thanks. Oh, is it Paul Shaw? Mm -hmm. uh, on the advice of his attorney, he was told not to make an appearance tonight and instead to ask that these letters be distributed to the school board members. Mm -hmm. So I will give everyone his letter. Did you get two? Yes. You can leave twice. Okay. Well, I'm like you. At this point, if this is all we have, this is all we have, but I know that it's been advertised that we're looking for a tennis coach. I don't know how many qualified coaches are out there that are looking for a tennis job. But I also think that, I mean, we can do more. We can do more than this. If these kids can go to these pros, you know, once a week, that's good. That You know, that's a good thing for them because a lot of them probably won't get that. Miss Shaw here takes her kids to the MAC herself. A lot of the kids, some of these 45 kids probably aren't going to get that opportunity. And for $18, you know, it's, it's more than what they're getting. But I still think we could do more. The Tuesday through Friday during 7th hour and after school. And, and I'm not saying that Coach Jones couldn't learn tennis and you know something from these pros he probably could i don't know but i mean it's not going to help the kids that are seeing your senior great right? it's not going to help him this year so coach jones just like Ms. Wally said though can't leave with the team during the day and a tennis match if the tennis match is in ruston they're going to have to leave it. Say, so what time do y'all leave MK for that? Usually 1 o'clock. There's no way. There's no way. So if you don't, and you, if, let's just say you just pick someone to go and they don't know tennis and you have to have a tiebreaker. You have to have a coach present right there while the tiebreaker happens. I'm going to meet with Wiley and Coach Jones and we're going to work this out. We've done okay. for other sports before. So we're okay. going to I'm going to go back to this. This is the last time I'm going to say it. 
I don't care if you do work it out with Miss Wiley and, and, and Coach Jones. If, you, if your time and your energy is in basketball, you're not going to do those kids justice. You can do whatever you want to do, but you're not going to do them justice. It, it's the same reason why I would not hire a head basketball coach to coach football with me. Because it's going to overlap, and that basketball coach, where is his or her heart going to be? It's going to be in basketball season, so therefore you're going to cripple my football players. You, 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 it'd be like, you, you just, you, it just doesn't work. It, you, 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 it'd be like the old uh, Oak Ridge boys saying, trying to love two women is like a ball and chain. <laughs> you can't do it. It'll make it work, but it ain't going to work. Because those people right there, I hate it for you, son, you seen me. If this continues like it is, good luck. I love you, and I'm sorry. I'm like that man right there. If I could do something about it, I'd do. But I can't. And neither can nobody sitting at this table except Miss McCann. We literally tried a basketball coach last year, so we already have an example. It doesn't work. It ain't going to work. And if you just take take seventh hour away from football and baseball and never let them practice, wait lift, do their conditioning, what they are, to see what your record is at the end of the year. Just always remember Just, what just the off-season, seventh hour piece. Seven days a week. Well, to, to your students, I don't know if your parents told you, but I applaud you for coming. I do too. I applaud you for having enough courage to come Stand up and, and talk. fight and defend respectfully uh, for what you believe in. Uh, I have no issue with what anybody has said. Uh, again, I'm going on record. There's nothing that I can do about this. I will continue to talk with her uh, about options. Uh, Again, I don't know, but what I do know is uh, somewhere, somehow, some way, there's going to be a tennis coach. I don't think that y'all will come up with a good idea. I, I, I think y'all will. I know there was probably about at least 12 boys that played football that wanted to be here that were still in practice. So. Thank y'all for giving us the opportunity to talk. Y'all told me more than I knew that y'all were doing anyways, because I come to hear what the plan was. So at least you're planning. Um, I'm out of my time. Just remember, we can't wait to actually start practicing with them to February. They need to start practicing. Like really, like I said, they're sucking my tip right now. Bye right, guys. Thank you. Yes, it should be next in your folder. So the um, legislature, I sent you all an email Friday with an explanation of this. Um, I'm not sure if you wrote it, take the email and read it, but I knew it was a lot to process. But, uh, it, was, <laughs> it was a lot to process. It is a lot to process. So the legislator passed um, this summer a resolution to give each district an amount of money that could be used for um, recruitment and retention for every district. And so they, they gave each district an allotment. Our allotment was $62,430. But with that allotment, there are strings into how you can spend it. And so there were um, four areas that you could spend it. And so you had to just address where are your biggest needs in those four areas. And so we met with the uh, district strategic team and uh, met with Ms. Gillette, who deals with um, hiring and retention and recruitment and all those things. And so what we decided, and the board has to pass this, um, is that we would use the money to pay stipends for teachers in critical shortage areas. Those critical shortage areas are non-negotiable. It's secondary math, secondary science, and K-12 SPED. I asked, could we extend that to all? And I was told, no, you must stay in those areas. So I said, okay. Question. Yeah. Uh, recruitment and retention stipend for teachers in critical shortage, mm -hmm. will those be certified teachers? They do, yeah, certified, yes. I see yes. that under there. But Absolutely. Like, so, so we're not going to hire Don I know Brown. this is unruly for me to say this, but the kids told me, they said this in the meeting today, and I want to make sure y'all are aware, because we were, in my mind, I'm thinking, 
They said the coach said today, even if they did not attend on the Monday, they would still have to pay $18 because they had to pay. Like if we said 30 kids were coming and only 20 went, still all 30 had to pay. That's not going to g haul with kids so just, they, or a parent. So if they're sick and they miss it, they still got to They pay. still have to pay. That doesn't g haul with me. I just, I'm sorry. I apologize for interrupting. It's like daycare. No, that's. You do what you want to do, but this, this ain't working. All right, so um, critical shortage areas. So certified, and certification can be either you're a certified teacher that we have recruited to go to those positions, and so you may or may not be certified in that particular content area, but you're a certified teacher, or you've passed the Praxis Center in a program for that. So yes, certified in, in that. So the secondary math, which is 6012, and then, we, so we have teachers who already meet that, and then we have teachers who are on the bubble. If they could pass their practice and get in, then they would be eligible for it. So it'd be a little incentive for those who, who are not in a program yet to do that. So, um, so that's the first um, area that we we're looking at. Those are the hardest positions to fill, if you think about high school science, high school math, and then of course our SPED teachers um, at all grade levels are hard to find. Um, the second area would be stipends for teacher leadership positions, and so we looked through all of the um, qualifications there, uh, found that our biggest need, according to our population, is supporting our new teachers. And we have a big um, push to try to attract teachers, make them feel supported, and, and give them a mentor teacher or what we call a buddy teacher to support them throughout their first year. So the state actually gives us $2,000 a year, $1,000 in the fall, $1,000 in the spring, for mentor teachers to support teachers who are in a program. So we already get that funding. Problem is we have lots of new teachers who aren't in a program and they need support as well. So we would like to be able to use this money to support those mentor teachers in supporting our new teachers. Currently, we have 19 new teachers in the district, and 13 of those have less than one year experience. So those 13 would be our priority, and so the mentor teachers who are working with them would be eligible for the same thing the state gives us for the other mentor teachers, which is $2,000 a year. A thousand in the fall, a thousand in the spring. And they have all sorts they have to do. Ms. Erica Brodnax is actually in charge of this, and she has a binder that she gives them all. They have to fill out their tracking for the teachers. They have to fill out the calendars of when they've met and when they've observed and how they've supported the teachers. So there's a lot of work that goes into it that is a leadership position for them to, to be able to do. Actually, uh, Erica had a task. She did. She had her training. Yes. And Tyler one page, you know, the teachers for two hours. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the coaches, they'll miss, but she'll make up because they have coach practices. And once they make up, they get their money. So they're being compensated as well. Yeah. So we, we know we've got to support our new teachers. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole bunch of them there today. And the other part is we have buddy teachers. And so the buddy teachers are doing the same work that the mentor teachers are. They just don't have the certification because those mentor teachers had to go through classes and pass a test or in some cases have a degree in educational leadership. So the state doesn't give anything for that. And so we were like, well, we'll just do that. But they don't have the same certification. So we said we'd give them $1,000 a year, 500 a semester because they don't have that certification, but we still know. And at this point, we have about five who would represent that. So um, the money is good for two years. We tried real hard to be frugal with making sure we didn't give it all up this year because I want to make sure that um, Ms. Gillette has some when she starts going out to recruitment fairs in the spring that we can offer to try to attract science and math secondary and special ed teachers to come to college. I just need y'all to approve that. Got a question, Mr. McCann. Mm -hmm. So the state gave us $507,000 and we needed $120,000 more out of the general fund and then we had to kick in some more for our, uh, our pre-K program who wasn't included in that as well. So the state's given us $62,430 and it lasts for two years. After that two years is over with, what do we do? So do we take this money, money back away from these it's people? It's a stipend. It's not added to their salary. It's just okay. a stipend. So this is not something in two years if the state doesn't give it back to us, we're going to have to... Okay. 
So for two years we get sixty-two thousand. We get sixty-two thousand total. Total. Yeah. For the to two be years. used over the two years. Okay. My next question is. Uh, I think we need a whole lot more certified teachers than we do mentors. Uh, when, I, when I look at the lack of certification and people that are teaching in our parish who are not certified, and in some cases, uh, not even with a college degree teaching here. So I think the most of the money needs to be spent to hire certified teachers. When you look at our test scores, and they hadn't completely come out yet, I'm sure our superintendent would post that to us next week. They're horrible way down and I think part of that is you know I mean just, just the way it is our, I'm going to be lack honest with you from the preliminary results our uncertified teachers at the high school outperformed our certified teachers. that's awesome yeah that's awesome. so I so was actually at a um, what was that called Rebecca we went to last week said playbook. Said playbook yes and but what the states pull your the, score down? The, sta no. the state has actually said certified does not equal content strong because you can have a certification, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're the best teacher because you have the certification. And when I look back at our test scores, our uncertified teachers outperformed our certified teachers in, every, in the high school, at the high school. Okay, so that my point is still, uh, I still think we need to hire certified teachers. I, I agree. mean, if we're gonna spend this much money to attract people, I mean, I don't think the majority of it needs to be given to mentors and, and buddies. Not These that are they're the good. That I, think I have on staff right now, and the money has to be spent this year, and then the rem remainder of it next year. So when we get to next year, if we want to take what's left over and we want to shift that to give more to the certified teachers, we absolutely can. What if you had fifty thousand left and you could use that fifty thousand to attract? certified teachers next They want year. us to spend the majority of it in this year. But they don't make you do that. Right? Or do they? Do they require you spend the majority of it now? Well, let me ask you this. Do you, do you think if we did spend it this year that we would draw in any more certified no, teachers? I don't think so. Where are they at? Yeah. They're, they're, they're not there. here. That's they're not here. Yeah. I'm saying, I, I don't think we could draw they're in They're not coming here. Possibly they're they're not going into education. No, no. You've got people that but gear, I, I talk to guys every day that, and I ask them specific questions. Well, I, mean, uh, I, I think if you had a certified math teacher in Monroe, Louisiana, teaching at a Monroe City school that is certified, and you offered that teacher $3,500 more than a normal math teacher at our school to come here and teach four days a week, then you get that teacher. You, you get think? that certified math teacher. But if you don't have it to offer, then you're not. You're sure not going to get it because you're already behind it. Maybe they don't want to drive. It's hard to compete. It is a stipend. It would only get it for two years. True. And that's the thing is you've got to spend all this money. I mean, there's strings attached. So, and so listening to that, probably the majority of our money is going to go into mentors and uh, buddies. Um, won't the mentors and buddy system help get these other teachers certified? Isn't that the absolute, whole point? Absolutely. And, and whole... it's absolute. I'm so glad you said that. Yes, we're trying to support our new teachers so that we get can them keep certified. them. We can we can get them certified and retain them. Yeah. But Brenda, I, I talked to a lady that was at the high school who chose to leave here because she couldn't get anybody to help her. Well, there you go. There That's what buddies. this is about. That's what this is about. To get people out. There you go. So maybe that's I, I think, all this, I think all this is good, but I think the implementation part is why I have an issue, which is going to lead me to vote no, which I, I hate that I have to, because I, I've heard this over and over and over again, but it never works the way that you say it's going to work. All of this is good. I'm kind of like both mentors and all that. All that stuff is good. But we've talked for 30 years about certified, certified, certified. Now, when I said it a month ago that we need certified teachers, people look crazy. But, but it's, the verse is different tonight. That non-certified non teachers don't really matter. A uh, matter more so than uh, a certified teacher. What I'm saying is, the the message that we put out is it changes every month. I hadn't seen that, but you know, I, I would think our our, our our person that's over personnel would would be looking for certified teachers. That's what we have. That's what we have the job fair for and everything else. 
No, we didn't find a whole lot of certified teachers who want to come here. Is that our fault? Maybe. Maybe we're not jumping through the hoops that we need to jump through. I don't know. I know my father was a personnel director for most of his, you know, educational career. He worked hard, but he 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 was the person doing it. We don't have a person necessarily specified that's their only job. Just like we're talking about the coaches well, situation. Well, Ms. Collette, it is her job, but she she does wear other hats. Ms. Yeah, Collette, I mean, but, but you work you work towards that. And the mentor, this like the mentor, the mentor program. I, that's the way I look at it. Is the the mentor program is to get our teachers to be better teachers and to be better certified. You would you wouldn't take on a, a, a first year coach on your football team and say, okay, you take those offense and leave them alone. They let him go. Right. You'd be mentoring. Right. Just like just like these teachers need to be mentored. These first year teachers need to be mentored. So can this money and that's, be spent? And that's the way you know. That's that's the way you improve the system. So can this money be spent to, let's say we got Lisa over here at the junior high, and she's not certified. So this money cannot be spent to help her get certified. Okay. So our only options. Because is if to that were allowable, in. it would be on my radar. But <laughs> if but if Lisa gets in a program during the school year, then Lisa is eligible for the stipend, correct? If she's in secondary math, science, or K twelve spent. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't do it like this. I, I mean, I'm money in the diet. There, it gives you the money, and they tell you these are the ways you can. I questioned everything. I've got the email thread <coughs> of all the answers from the State I Department. I, I believe I, I would, I mean, You get to do the hiring, but I believe I'd keep me some money aside for a couple of math teachers Absolutely. at the secondary Absolutely. Because <laughs> we don't have any. We don't have them. And I'd be, I'd be like, I'd keep me a couple, 15 or 20,000 set aside just for those people. Say, hey, we'll give you this if you'll come here for two years. So we may come back and revisit how if we need to adjust this moving into next year's hiring season. So, and we can do that. Motion and a second that we accept it with the stipulation that we can change it next year if we need to be. Were we voting on it? Yeah, we have to vote on it. So start. Yeah, I'll do a vote on it. Mr. Rance? Yes. Uh, Mr. Martin? Yes. Ms. Fowler? Yes. Uh, Mr. Glass? I want my vote, absolutely not. Uh, Ms. Fass? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Castles? Yes. Ms. Fowler? Yes. All right. Item L is financial update. Well, first, I apologize for putting the statement on the wrong side. The doctor didn't do what I thought I said. Anyway, that's just my technical solution. Uh, four pages. Uh, first page on general fund, meaning just general uh, fund one. So, uh, very briefly, well, I'll go through this kind of quick. The first line is local revenue. Last year we had $120,000. That was from the banks. This year we don't have that, and that money was used for improvements on the stadium and something else. I'll get into this. Uh, and so anyway, we had 120,000 out there. That's on the far right column here. They probably are. And if you look further down, uh, third line from the bottom is 98,793. That's where we spent that same money that was donated to us. And the other portion of that is buried somewhere in this other line. Uh, third line, other source of funds, that's indirect costs. Last year we had 91000 This year, because we're uh, meeting here on October 3rd, I've not done any of the grant reimbursement requests. So currently that's zero, but you know, it should come up uh, before the end of the month. Uh, further down, salaries, way up down. Uh, last year was $1,170,000. This year, $1,153,000. Uh, $1,153,000. That's annualized to a $204,000 decrease in salaries on general fund. Benefits also went down a couple more now. Uh, other purchased services, that's line 500. Uh, last year was 538, this year is 716,000 dollars. That's all insurance increase. Uh, property, line 700. Last year was the 98,000 dollars, and that's all the stadium improvements. Uh, this year we spent 253,000 dollars, that's on two buses. I think in we spent the same comparable amount last year for two buses, but those were paid for at a later time. Uh, 
uh, and that's it. Uh, next page is uh, sales tax. Uh, sales tax only has one month in it. Uh, this year was last year, it has two months already recorded. Uh, we expect to get around $260,000 for uh, September. That is not in book, so that would pull us ahead of last year with projected revenue of $384,000 versus last year's $119,000. Lunch fund, uh, everything's pretty much the same except for our food costs. That's line 600. Last year was 77000 this year is 99000 uh, There's no revenue, which is as usual. That will come in the following months. And then maintenance fund, we have no revenue there. That is funded by property tax. That will come in December and January, uh, so that's normal. Uh, we have less repairs this year, which is the 112,000. It's an online 400. This year it's uh, 80,000. So we have a favorable change there. So not a whole lot. But, I mean, we closed the month so early. We're reporting this so early. So there's still some numbers out there that aren't finalized. So it is the best that can be done on the first uh, The audit's going smoothly. Uh, Hopefully, it will be closed out by the 15th, 20th of the month, which would be a record for us, and really it's kind of a record for the new area. So, that's all I know. Anybody got questions? Yeah. All right, thank you, David. Adam G. is the district leader's update. This is fine. Okay, well. Uh, for we, we're looking at doing um, activities <clears throat> for Red Ribbon Week, which is the October 24th through 27th. So the schools are sending their activities uh, by this Friday so they can go to the newspaper. And um, that will be published uh, in, a, in the journal during the week of, uh, of October 24th through 27th. <clears throat> That's what we are looking at doing, what we're doing now. And also, um, I thought I'd share this with you all. Uh, in the spring, I received this, the uh, National Award for the um, Awards for the State of the Federal Program for the State of Louisiana. And uh, Leadership and Dedicated Service to State Affiliation in Louisiana. Read it, read it. Read okay. It. Uh, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but the NAFE. National, National Association of Federal Educator Program. Programs yes. Association. Extends its appreciation and gratitude to Mary Wiley, Director of Federal Programs, in recognition for your leadership and dedicated service to the state affiliation in Louisiana, March 27th through 29th of 2023. Congratulations. Yes. 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 And then in the fall, we'll get the state award. It's a conference, the last about a conference, it'll be in Baton Rouge. Um, uh, probably, uh, I think it's like March. It's March or six, my perfection. Six to the night. And so uh, they're like, and I get that state award. But that was a national and then a state. That's what Pedal Purple um, Big Ship Award. What's that? I don't know if people can see it, but it's really great. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's, I thought I'd share that with you. Well, they can do already. I had yeah. over earlier. Signed yeah. my leave to go to Washington, D.C. and participate with my federal program. Uh, so they did the um, photo shoot and all that kind of good stuff up there. Celebrity. Such a snake. Celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Riley. You're welcome. Michael? Uh, we don't have a whole lot to report. We're constantly making adjustments on the network to make sure it's operating function, uh, as smoothly as possible. Um, we are focusing on our cybersecurity training and working with David to wrap up the, uh, the audit for all of the, the stuff the IT side has to do. Michael, how do you like any new job? I love it. You look so much less stressed. You got, you got I don't know how. Around the kids every day. I don't know how, but <laughs> yeah. he's twenty-four seven. Miss Meredith. Uh, yeah, so this summer, uh, we got a call from the Louisiana Department of Education, and they asked if we wanted to be part of a grant that they were writing, and it was a federal grant for uh, transitions. And I, um, 
hate to say it, but I was scared to um, really talk too much about it because I didn't think there was any way in the world that we were actually going to be awarded this grant. But uh, the Louisiana Department of Education announced today in a press release that actually Ms. Coates found. I've been you know, stalking the website and hadn't seen it, but um, Louisiana was awarded $10 million. And, no, we're not getting all $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, That's a lot of money. <laughs> the Louisiana Department of Education was awarded uh, $10 million to improve career opportunities for students with disabilities. Louisiana was one of 20 states that received the funding. And out of Louisiana, there are two districts that they're going to do this in, and we are one of them. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. So, but it's, it's not something that, that we pursued. I, um, the, the state called us and said, hey, do you want in? And I was like, of course I want in. Um, but like I said, I haven't even said anything that, because it seemed crazy to kind of dream that big. But what it is is over the next five years we're going to be partnering directly with somebody from the Department of Education who um, is going to help us set up a transitions model with Louisiana Rehabilitation Services that can hopefully really improve long-term outcomes for our students with disabilities in entering the workforce and then even independent living. And the idea behind it is that there's a lot of federal money out there through rehabilitation services and other things that school districts don't know how to utilize and hopefully this can come, become a long-term sustainable model that even once the five years is over it'll last forever. Ms. Coates? Um, I did have a copy of the Head Start Management Bill. Um, every in our five-year grant cycle we are supposed to go through an orientation with the board of course, as we've talked before, like Head Start, their governing board policy council is a lot different. If you're a school district, um, your board looks a little different. But we do have a monitoring coming up in a couple of weeks. And I started copying a bunch of stuff for y'all. And I thought, you know what, they don't want all this. So I, I brought you this. And what I thought I would do is load all this in a folder on a drive and send you a link where you can click through it on your computer, your phone, whatever, and look through it. And then I'll probably just send you a doc where you say, yes, I've, I've looked at it. Um, and that way, too, you'll have it. You can look back at it any time. Um, when they do come, they're going to be here a whole week. Um, it's a team of three people. They will um, be interviewing teachers. They'll observe in classrooms. They'll spend some time with Mr. Sonia um, over the financials. Um, each one of our program directors that, that works with the Early Childhood Head Start funds, they'll be with um, parent interviews. It, it's, it's a big deal, but they will also ask um, to have a day set up where someone from the board can be with them. So I will let y'all know we're supposed to get our final calendar from them or this week. I'll let you know the time and if any of you can be there, even if it's Zoom, even if you could be available for that 30 minutes to be on Zoom with them, um, they do want some of the governing board, you know, to be there just to. They check with you to make sure that you're aware of things that are going on, that we do communicate with you, that you know about our programs and things like that. So, um, I don't know the specific questions, but it's, um, we haven't had one of these ever. It's a brand new um, monitoring protocol. Use, but it's really big. So <laughs> everybody has their part. Um, but we do have 66 kids at, at Kelly right now, um, 102 with the pre k and we got kind of like Ms. Meredith was talking about the big surprises. We had someone reach out to us from the Department of Ed, what, about six weeks ago, I got an email. I didn't know who this person was, and she just said, we're probably interested in receiving some literacy materials, pre-K through five. I said, sure, you know. So she wanted a number of teachers and everything. And last Friday was a week ago, eight pallets were delivered, I mean, full of boxes that um, went out to the schools, pre-K through five. There were the, the little wobbling stools that kids, you know, they talk about them concentrating in the balls and different things. Um, there's no telling the dollar amount. We don't know. Um, another pallet came this past week um, of books that will go back out to All them. sorts of literacy games yeah, and it cards. Was, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like Christmas. And know? carpet, a brand new carpet for every pre-K and kindergarten classroom. Mm -hmm. So those are $500. Mm -hmm. and they're like 12, 13 months. All because Monica said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still don't know why. Yeah, I always say yes. So, um, but yeah, there's some wonderful resources that our teachers have. 
October 12th and 13th. That's why I had to move the meeting. So, um, parent teacher conferences are October the 24th. So, students will dismiss at half a day. And so, from 12 to 6 30, we, we can accommodate people who don't work and people who do work um, to have for, come for parent teacher conferences. Um, the other thing I have for you is I'm going to pass out um, several times I've, we have been asked about the certification to take one pass around of our teachers. And so, I have to, I had to come up with this report for Dr. Bumley because the, the, there's an issue with vacancies across the state and so every, by the fifth of every month I have to report to him what our vacancies are by school and so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put this together and give it to the board so you know the actual numbers that we're dealing with. So I just listed out the schools and their letter grades and their grade bands because that's what Dr. Bumley requires. And then there's a column for the number of certified teachers by school. After that is a, a column for the number of certified teachers, but they're teaching out of their field. So we do have teachers, we actually we have 11 in the parish who are certified teachers. They're just teaching in an area that is outside of their certification. The next column is teachers who are in a certification program. So these are your, your people who have a bachelor's degree and they are in like Northwestern or I teach or ULM getting their master's degree as well as their certification. And then you have the number of uncertified teachers who are not in a program. And we have 23 of those teachers and, and these teachers, a lot of them are new hires that just have a bachelor's degree and they haven't like taken their praxis yet or some of them they have taken their praxis and they've not passed it yet but we keep them on. So that's the number that's represented there. Uh, the next column is the number of teachers without a bachelor's degree, and we did have to hire um, nine this year. Now, I will say that four of those are at Head Start, but Head Start does not require a four-year degree. So, actually, we have five teachers who are um, in that category. And then we have a total of five vacancies. So, we have five positions that are being filled with a long-term sub. And um, I know Angela was at uh, the personnel conference last week and was... Uh, told from the new superintendents who they had a, a I'm not even a new superintendent anymore, that's crazy to think about, but there was only one district represented that had all positions filled and that was an online school. So every other district has vacancies, which is why we have to report this now because everyone is having a problem filling those. Um, so the next column is the total number of positions. I put this next column in here. This is the percent that are recognized as certified. So the state recognizes those who are certified, those who are certified teaching out of field, and those who are in a certification program as highly qualified certified teachers. So I was really happy with these numbers. We have 100% um, at Kelly because they meet the qualifications there. We have 86% of our teachers are certified at the pre-K, 65% at Grayson, 70% at Columbia, 78% at Union Central, 79% at Caldwell Junior High, 77% at Caldwell Parish High School, and then the 50% is we have one gifted and one ATE that service all of our students. So our total number of teachers who are certified, according to the state, is 73%. I was pretty happy with that number, considering what I was afraid it might be. I also report in the next column, we have 10 paraprofessionals who are in programs to become certified teachers. The GYO stands for Grow Your Own Teachers. We've partnered in a pilot with Louisiana Delta Community College. Um, we hire these people, they're paras, and they are taking their classwork for free with a grant from Delta. And so they are getting hands on, and what will happen is they'll spend a year and a half at Delta, a year and a half at ULM, but all of their experience as a pair counts as their student teaching. So they'll finish in three years. So we are great. super excited to be a part of that program. And the other program is REACH, and that is the state's um, 
certification program for paras. And so total, we have 10 that we are trying to grow to become teachers. So I'm very proud of our paras who participate in these programs. Um, and we're growing our own to, to help them. Is there a limit that they give you on that? Pardon? Is there a limit that they give you on grow your own? Yes. Yeah, and we actually, that? our limit was um, three and they took four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to do some bargaining. Maybe what does this as, this acronym OFAT sound for? Out of field, Out of field. authority to teach. Mm -hmm. So, like a, a, several of those teachers at OFATs are SPED teachers. Um, they are teachers that are certified to teach K through five or six to eight, but because we couldn't find teachers um, certified in special education, the principal a lot of times tries to pull some of their strongest teachers into that special education role. So they have a current teaching certificate. It's just not in special education. I think I have. I, I, well, I don't know. because yeah, uh, We went through last week, teacher by teacher, looking at certificates and, and filling this I out. I can't remember, but three or four of those OFATs are, are special education. So it, it's just most people don't go to college and try to get certified to teach special education. So a lot of times principals will recruit really strong teachers and, and they do make great set, set teachers. So. so I just, and then there's notes out there and that gets very specific, but you can read um, with this, with the positions that are hired by a bachelor, with the, without a bachelor's degree or long-term vacancies. I put notes out beside it so you would know what we're doing. Um, in those areas, but those are specific people, so I don't want to read that out loud, but you can read that. I was pleased. I was pleasantly surprised because I had heard all this, oh, you have, oh, you have, and now I have it in black and white, and you do too, so um, we're working hard. Any questions? That's all I I'm here, motion to adjourn. I'm here, motion to adjourn. Yes, sir. Hold on. You know, in, in the past, and, I, and I've, I've accepted this, but I think it, it needs to be added back. You know, we had a board member discussion, a board member comment. I, I've had somebody ask me, say, when you guys have a meeting, I, I never see what you guys do as a board. I never see what you say. I never have the opportunity to do it. And it, it appears that the board is just existing, kind of like you're going to church and just listen to the minister. Board member comments need to be added back on this agenda because it's not actually, the board runs the meeting. Okay, so the board should have their input and say it. If they need to bring something from the district, they have no way of doing it other than what I'm doing now. So it, it needs to be added back on there. And you're the president. I'm addressing this to you now. Explain that a little bit more. I'm trying to understand. Well, right now you have no other way to make a comment other than what I'm doing now, which is before Randy adjourned. So board so members. you're saying that there's some. Yeah, after the meeting. Yeah, after the meeting, yeah. You, you, you don't have to utilize that. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it should be there because I, I have several questions I need to ask principals that are not here right now that, that, that is really bothering me. We're going to go ahead and ask it. If, if Maria and I was at school, Ms. Wilder, you've been a principal. Rebecca, you've been a principal. Nikki, you've been a principal. If Maria and I are at school playing and Maria calls me the N-word and I hit her back, okay, why does the person who hit back get disciplined and the kid who actually initiated don't? So I have a lot of questions that I need to ask and, and talking about it is not going to do any good. So I need to bring this out to make sure that everybody's aware so something can be done about the, the inadequacies, inadequacies when it comes to the policy and making sure that every kid feels like they're a part of Colorado Parish School System. I, I'm for anybody, if, if you call something, I think this person should be College. Exactly. It should be College because kids. you're initiating it. Because at College one time, right, we, we had started and participated. Okay, so if you started and you participate, there's some discipline that goes. And I'm tired of parents coming to me because it does look unfair. But I'm not there to justify whether it is or is not. But I think I have no way of asking that question. And, and when you read the paper, you, you you don't know what Randy said, you don't know what Bo said, you don't know what Belinda said. They have a district that they represent, but nobody knows it because all all Kaylee has been able to send send to the uh, paper. I'm assuming is the motion in the second. Right. So the board speaks for 
the public, public, and they speak to the public. That option is not here. Now, I'm not saying we get up here and just go 10, 15, 20, 30. That's not what I'm saying, but that option should be there because it's part of the proxy that's given to board members to be able to, you know, make suggestions, whatever the case may be. So, so, I, so I, let, let me, let me, let me. We're talking I, about. I'm new to this. I just, but we we'll understand this. So what you're saying is, if you should have something right happened down the road that I don't know nothing about, I just heard about it before I walked in the door, if I wanted to ask about it in this meeting with my board, fellow board members, I could ask. Well, no, even no, though it's no, not no, on the agenda. No, no, no. That's, okay, that's, so what, what, that's what, not what are we talking about? You, you can go about it on the term. And we'll, we'll, yeah, it, explain it, it to it's, you. It's already right. been there. We just took well, it off. We let you talk. Yeah. Anyway. Look, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but it shouldn't just be me. Yeah. It should be anybody else that's here. Yeah. Because, again, the board, I think people have a misconception as to how the board is conducted. The superintendent is the secretary. Kaylee is the secretary. The board runs the meeting. Right. So what I'm saying is the board don't have that option there now to make a suggestion or comment at that point in time. Well, we can ask. Well, it's, it, it was always there. We took it off, Mr. Lett, was it just as a courtesy. Right. I'm saying it needs to be back. Now, I'm not saying me or anybody else get in and spend 15, 20 minutes at the end of the meeting because I'm ready to go now. But it needs to be said. And, and again, I guess when you look at stuff, you get frustrated because I, I'm – I'm on one of these tangents, so let's just adjourn. <laughs> Put a line item on the agenda for the board. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, board it, it's always been a board member coming. Fine, man. We used to have it there, actually. Hey, before y'all adjourn, if anyone hadn't bought several high school families, well, the high school, the Jack, pizza. Jack is having their pizza pig out. If you don't want to cook dinner, you don't want to cook dinner. You adjourn, Randy? I'll move. I'll second. All right.